Hello, Gary Smith here. Your opportunity stages are one of the most critical things to get right in Salesforce, but it's also a very challenging topic for many companies. And if you, if you get it wrong, then your pipeline visibility is completely distorted, you, you can't forecast accurately, and it's impossible to manage the sales team effectively. So in this video, I'll explain why opportunity stages are so important and the five most common mistakes I see with opportunity stages and how to avoid them. By the way, have a look at my video on recommended opportunity stages. That video walks you through the stages used by many of our customers and explains how they, they might apply in your business. So with that, let's get started. Why are opportunity stages so critical? Well, the reason is they are fundamentally important to pipeline visibility, to revenue forecasting and sales management. For example, have a look at this dashboard chart. The chart shows the current pipeline summarized by close date, opportunity amount and opportunity stage. So for example, we can see that the funnel contains $750,000 of opportunities due to close in November. Of this, $40,000 is at the prospecting stage and another 50,000 at the investigation stage. You can see the other values for yourself. This type of chart gives powerful visibility of the funnel and the underlying report means you can drill down for more details. These are vital tools for sales managers because they allow you to manage the sales team based on what you know is in the funnel. However, of course, that's not true if your opportunity stages are all over the place or, for example, the stages don't reflect the sales process in your business. By the way, the chart I just showed you if you want to learn more about using dashboard charts for pipeline visibility, then I've written this blog post. It's called, if you only use one dashboard chart this year, make it this one. There's lots of practical detailed advice about pipeline reports. So take a look at that one later. So let's talk about the five most common mistakes you need to avoid with opportunity stages. Here's the first one. The opportunity stages are not clear or they are ambiguous. For example, a customer I worked with recently had negotiation and closing. What's the difference between those stages? I wasn't sure and neither were any of the salespeople. Likewise, needs analysis and requirements gathering. I'm not sure about the difference between those two stages either. Ambiguity here is it's always a mistake. If there isn't a clear delineation between the stages, then you are not going to get reliable pipeline visibility. So I recommend make sure your stages are clear and unambiguous, that you communicate the stages and agree them with the sales team and that you establish exit criteria that determine when an opportunity is ready to move from one stage to the next. By the way, you might want to use the lightning path in Salesforce to summarize the definition of each stage and to list those exit criteria. Here's mistake number two. Your opportunity stages don't reflect your sales process. Now, the purists amongst you will say, hang on, the opportunity stages should reflect the buying process, not your sales process. And of course, you're right. However, there are three problems with that. First, the customer buying processes are all different. So we could end up with a heck of a lot of opportunity stages, and we probably don't want that. Second, of course, customers don't always tell us what their buying process is or where they are up to, whereas we do at least know where we are up to in the sales process. And third, the customers themselves 
often don't know or they don't understand their own buying process, especially if it's a purchase that they haven't made before. So we usually define the opportunity stages in terms of our sales process rather than the customer buying process. That assumes we know what our sales process is. So here's what I suggest. First, work out your sales process and define the opportunity stages accordingly. Second, vary the stages between different types of sales process if you have more than one. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, in many businesses, the sales process for new customers is different to the sales process for existing customers. The existing customer process may be much shorter, for example, especially if you're selling renewables or upgrades or, or whatever, something like that. Now, you can use something called record types in Salesforce so that the stages reflect the type of opportunity or the type of customer that you're selling to. I also suggest that when appropriate, salespeople adjust the probability for each stage. Not everyone realizes that you can do that. You can change the default probability associated with each stage. So do that to fine tune the visibility of your weighted pipeline. Here's mistake number three. Opportunity stages are not verbs. What do I mean by that? Well, the stages should not be milestones that define the status of an opportunity at a specific point in time. Instead, they should reflect the status of an opportunity over time. So, for example, qualifying rather than qualified. Discovery rather than first meeting. Perhaps evaluating proposal rather than proposal set. In other words, the stages reflect activities that happen over a period of time rather than a single event. Here's mistake number four. Too many opportunity stages. Here's what happens if you have too many opportunity stages. You can't see the wood for the trees. Instead of improving pipeline visibility, it declines. I believe this happens either when companies are trying to get too granular in tracking the progress of deals, or if you have fulfillment activities defined as opportunity stages. If that is the case, move those other stages into a separate field so that you end up with only four or five pipeline stages. And finally, mistake number five, and probably the most common, not keeping your opportunities up to date. Here's an example of what I mean. Let's assume we are in the last week of November and that the sales cycle in this business is three months. Are those deals in the prospecting and discovery stage that are due to close this month, are they really at the right opportunity stage? If they are, then you are right to be skeptical about whether they will close successfully this month. That means my pipeline view is probably not all that robust. Either the deal should be at a more advanced stage or at a different close date, or maybe both. Likewise, those deals due to close in earlier months, should those deals really be marked as won or lost? If they are still open, the close date and potentially the stage need to be updated. You can see what I'm saying. It's no good having a perfect set of opportunity stages if people are not keeping their deals up to date. So I recommend make sure everyone understands the importance of keeping the stage on each opportunity up to date and examine this regularly in pipeline reviews. I also recommend you implement pipeline metrics that measure the quality of the funnel. For example, the number of days since the last stage change or the number of times that the close data slipped from one month to the next. Take a look at our free sales dashboard chart on the App Exchange. It includes lots of pipeline reports and those pipeline quality metrics. So 
Let's summarize. One, avoid ambiguity in your stages. Two, make sure your stages reflect your sales process. Three, use verbs, not milestones. Four, avoid too many stages. And five, don't let your pipeline fall into disrepair. Keep those opportunities up to date. Now, final thing. I urge you to look at my video on recommended opportunity stages. I explain the stages that many of our customers use and show you how they might apply in your business. Take a look at that video next. Bye for now.